Welcome back to Curator on the Loose. I'm Matthew Burchette. I'm the senior curator at the Museum of Flight. And today we are talking about, bam, this guy, the MiG-21. Did you know that the MiG-21's first flight was in 1955? And 60 years later, there are still MiG-21 variants flying? That is crazy. I love this plane. Here's a little bit of trivia for you. If you look down on the plane, it looks a little bit like a Russian stringed instrument. In fact, the Russians nicknamed it the balalaika. The Poles, on the other hand, called it the pencil. And you'll see why in just a minute. Through the magic of some video, we're gonna show you some B-roll on it. You're gonna go, oh yeah, I totally get it. But what did the Americans and NATO call it? The good old fish bed. Ugh, seriously, fish bed? Eh, whatever, it's still a cool looking plane. Did you know that over 11,000 of these guys have been built? That is crazy. In fact, for the longest time, it was the aircraft that had been in production longer than anybody else. That's now been beaten by the F-15, but hey, you know, that's all right. We still love this plane. Let's go check out some of the things that make it such a neat aircraft. So one of the things that makes the MiG-21 family so distinctive is bam, this guy, the big huge shock cone right up front. And right back here, it doesn't really look like it, but this is actually the intake for the engine. And the idea of the shock cone is, is that you're screaming along at supersonic speed, the air gets kind of wonky. And this is designed to smooth it out and slow it down before it gets into the engine. And it hits this and then kind of ripples along the edge of this and goes right into the engine. It kind of slows down a little bit and it makes the engine a little more efficient. And it's also, let's just face it, it's cool looking. Let's go check out the back end of this engine and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Come on. So the MiG-21 was designed as a high-speed interceptor and a light strike fighter. And to get that guy moving, woof, this. A Tumansky R11 F25 300 jet engine, a turbojet to be specific. And that guy right there could kick this baby up to Mach 2 plus. That is speedy. Now, this was also equipped with a Delta wing and a delta wing basically is a delta, a triangle, which is great if you wanna go really fast. It's not so great if you wanna turn. So these guys weren't that great at dogfighting. In Vietnam, they would like to sneak up on our F1, um, F-105s and F-4s, launch their ATOL missiles, and then get the heck out of there. They could turn tightly for a while, but if they went into a big turning battle, they lost speed really fast. And that's when the Phantom pilots would jump on them and knock them out of the air. Wow. All right, there's some other things that you guys need to know about this plane, so let's keep moving. One of the really cool things about the MiG-21 is how the pilot would get out. Now you're thinking, okay, big deal. It's an ejection seat. Yeah, but check this out. Our canopy is hinged to the right. On early model MiG-21s, it was actually hinged at the front. So you got in with the canopy up like this. There was a reason for that. As you ejected at Mach 2, that canopy would come up and was actually attached to your ejection seat and was a shield in front of you for all that Mach 2 point air. How cool is that? That is an amazing idea. All right, there are other things we need to talk about like guns and missiles. So our MiG-21 is a MiG-21 PFM, which means it didn't come equipped with an internal gun but it did have the ability to carry a big giant gun pod, kind of like an F4 Phantom with their 20 millimeter gun pod. Now this is just nothing more than a really big fuel tank. And you know what? You needed it. On a clean MiG-21, it only had about 45 minutes of flight time. No wonder you need this guy. You need that extra fuel. But what else could this thing carry? actually quite a bit. It had the ability to carry four pylons, 
two on each wing. And on those pylons, you could carry bombs, rockets, and missiles. And one of the most famous missiles that it would carry is the K-13, known as the ATOL in NATO language. And the K-13 was basically, not even basically, it was a reverse-engineered AIM-9 Sidewinder heat-seeking missile. That's pretty cool. The Russians actually reverse-engineer a whole lot of Western stuff, but they use it to great advantage. Now, let's talk a little bit about our plane, this guy right here, and how we got it. And for that, we gotta go back upstairs. Our MiG-21 has a neat history. And if you look back there on the tail, that red, white, and blue pie chart, that's the symbol for the Czech Republic Air Force. That's where this plane was built, in the Czech Republic. How cool is that? After the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, one of our board members was actually overseas and he saw a whole bunch of MiG-21s and they were all under a tarp and he thought, hmm, wonder what's gonna happen to those. He found out they were gonna be scrapped. So we actually worked with the Czech Republic to get this aircraft back to the United States and it took forever. So many hoops to jump through, but when it finally got here to the United States, it came with two Czech mechanics to put it back together. That's pretty cool. You know what they liked best about coming to the United States? Our supermarkets. Go figure. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you're staying at home and staying safe and having a good time in quarantine if that's even possible. Just a reminder, if you're bored, check out the museum store. We have so much cool stuff in there and it's all available for purchase. In fact, if you buy 50 bucks worth of stuff, we'll ship it to you for free. That's pretty cool. Jigsaw puzzles, that's a good time consumer right there. Make sure you check us out and make sure you tune in again next week for another episode of Curator on the Loose.